Tuesday, November 16th, and the time for your copy is today morning news update. Lawyers for the Fair Trading Commission are focusing on an interim rate relief for the Barbados Light and Power Company Limited as the Commission awaits submissions from interveners. This was revealed to Barbados Today on Monday by the FTC's Chief Executive Officer, Marsha Atherley Ikishi. Emmanuel Joseph reports. The Commission Chair said that apart from analyzing the interim rate relief issue while waiting on submissions from the interveners, the regulator was also looking at a request from the electric company for confidentiality. The FTC chief said while the interveners had been given a deadline of December 15th to send in their objections, she did not expect them to be ready until close to the date. You would have realized that last week we sent out um, the notification that we have received the application, mm -hmm. um, given the interveners until I believe the 15th of December to provide, to indicate whether they want to intervene or not. Mm -hmm. um, I do not anticipate that we will get anything closer until close to date because there are a number of things that they have to do to get that point. They have to provide affidavits and the like. Um, so I do not think there are any to date, but we would have um, advise them that they can go to the website to see the redacted version of the application that is up. Um, it is a lot of information to go through. So I would expect that they would go through that at least partially before seeking intervener status so that they understand what they're being uh, required to assess. The electric company is requesting a hike of 8.79%, which it projects will result in an overall revenue requirement of $440.2 million, an increase of $46.4 million. The company said in its application that a continued decline in earnings would negatively impact its ability to satisfy the concerns of lenders whom BLMP would have to approach for new loans required for expansion and to execute its capital investment plan. Emmanuel Joseph for Barbados Today. The Congress of Trade Unions and the Staff Associations is pressing ahead with its usual practice of meeting with government to negotiate public sector wages and salaries. Confirmation of this from CITUSAB's General Secretary, Dennis DePisa. In an interview with Barbados Today, DePisa explained that it was the norm for the labor organization to engage government in discussions pertaining to increasing wages and salaries every two years, a practice he said would continue even as the country continues to battle the COVID-19 pandemic. However, he said it was too early to say whether CITUSAB would be seeking a wage increase. Holland American Line cruise ship Rotterdam made its inaugural call at the Bridgetown port on Monday. Minister of Maritime Affairs Kirk Humphrey and Tourism Minister Senator Lisa Cummins joined the port officials in greeting the vessel of 932 crew and 1,926 passengers. Humphrey said it has been a difficult two years for the cruise industry in Barbados with the advent of the COVID-19 pandemic, but he disclosed that his ministry, along with the ministries of tourism and health, would continue to work on protocols for the industry that would create a safe environment for cruise passengers while helping to boost the economy. We're also hoping to be able to build partnerships to be able to effectively help us build back on the cruise space. And because of your care for the environment, we trust that you will be a good partner with us to be able to help us do that. The other issue that is of concern to me is in relation to the work that we're doing in Barbados. Now, it makes a lot of sense for us to have 
over the next few weeks and months, hopefully, 300 and something thousand persons passing through Barbados. We hope that that work is being able to be realized in a meaningful way, manifested in the lives of ordinary Barbadians in a meaningful way, provided that we are able to stick to the protocols. And I know that the Bridgestone Port, I know that BTMI, I know the Minister of Tourism, we have been having conversations with the wider cruise lines in relation to how we treat to the taxis that are operating in this Bridgestone Port. Um, it's important that we make sure that the bubble is safe. Health protocols to govern the new market village at Fairchild Street will be strictly enforced. Word of this from the project's spokeswoman, Joanne Haig, as she took reporters on a tour of the area. Pointing to the past, where individuals would often relieve themselves or litter in and around the market, Haig said such health issues should be a thing of the past amid heightened security. Markets are now being monitored with CCTV. So those who had plans or used to decide that they're going to relieve themselves in the market around food, uh, I hope that they think twice because this place is now being monitored. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, my name is Michelle Hines and I own a company called HM Novelties. I have three children, two of which are under the age to get the vaccine and that makes them vulnerable. And the eldest, she is vaccinated and that's a good thing because all she wants to do is hang with her friends. I take care of my 80 year old mum and she has many comorbidities and I love my mom and I would not want for anything to happen to her. I am one of the ones that suffered absolutely no symptoms for either the first or the second jab. When you have the vaccine, you have a weapon to fight against this virus, to fight against this beast. 95% of my friends and family are vaccinated and that literally makes me feel secure. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. The news from the region now, gun crimes in Guyana remain a source of worry for law enforcement officials. More in this report from News Source Guyana. The daily number of gun crimes and robberies in the country remains worrying. Crime Chief Wendell Blanham today said while there has been a slight reduction in gun robberies and murders from January to mid-November this year, when compared to the same period last year, both categories of crime remain a source of worry for the Guyana Police Force. During a presentation on the crime situation in the country this morning, the Crime Chief said so far for this year, a total of 119 murders have been recorded when compared to 133 for the same period last year, which represents a 10.5% decrease in the number of murders. However, nationally, the murder rate for 100,000 persons continues to be a source of concern for us. Mr. Blenheim noted that serious attention is also being given to the number of gun robberies that are being committed on a daily basis. There have been 335 gun robberies recorded so far this year, which is an average of one gun robbery per day when compared with 477 last year. That's a 29% reduction in gun crimes. The crime chief said break and enter and larceny, which remain the most prevalent crime in the country, has seen a 17% reduction for the period, which has led to an overall 19 0.4% reduction in serious crimes this year. Humanitarians in Afghanistan warned that one in four pregnant women and one in two children are malnourished in the country and half of all people do not know where their next meal is coming from. That's according to UN spokesperson Farhan Haq, who was reporting on behalf of the UN Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs. Moving to Afghanistan, our humanitarian colleagues tell us that the Uruzgan COVID-19 Provincial Hospital has suspended its medical services since Saturday due to a shortage of funds and the lack of medical supplies and equipment. Our humanitarian colleagues also say that yesterday, an interagency team assessed the needs of families displaced by drought from Badgis and Gore provinces to Hirath province. About 1,000 people are staying in the open. Needs assessments are also ongoing across the country to identify people in need of help to cope with the winter. 
The International Organization for Migration is providing winterization assistance in, di in districts of Badakhshan province for 1,000 families, including shelter, non-food items, and clothing. Our humanitarian colleagues stress that while the response in Afghanistan continues, much more must be done by the international community. They warned that one in four pregnant women and one in two children are malnourished in the country, and half of all people do not know where their next meal is coming from. The flash appeal for Afghanistan, targeting 11 million people with aid through the end of 2021, is currently 86% funded. So far, $524 million has been received. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.